All right, welcome to our first official podcast for the National Real-Time Crime Center Association. I am your host, Detective Eric Levine, and today I have with me the Vice President of Administration, Nikki North. How's it going, Nikki? Good, good. How you doing? I'm doing good. This is uh, our kickoff. We've been talking about having a podcast now um, for, what, six, seven months, Mm -hmm. and we said we were going to start in January. And what better way to start in January than the last day of January? I I know. Um, We are busy. This association has so many moving parts, and we all have full-time jobs on top of that. So there's a lot of crap going on. Um, Mm -hmm. And initially, we intended on having two members, uh, board members of the National Real-Time Crime Center Association. Um, I'm going to start abbreviating that. What is our favorite term for that? Nardic? Nartica? Yeah. We're going to have to pick something like that. Let's go. I like Nartica. Nartica sounds good. It's yeah. it's like trying to say Antarctica, but not something like that. So, um, yeah, if you hear me say Nartica for now on, you know I'm talking about the N-R-T-C-C-A. Um, but the point of today's podcast uh, for this is just some general understanding of what it is the National Real-Time Crime Center is and uh, what – your role is Nikki for the board and what the board is doing and what we're providing and how people can join up so they can actually see the benefits of uh, being a part of our, our association. Um, And I would advise anybody uh, in law enforcement to, to get on board as a, as a law enforcement officer myself, because this is literally the future of policing. This is where we're headed. And I get really excited talking about this stuff. I nerd out on it. Um, as you can see behind me, I am quite the nerd anyway. So I like this tech stuff. So um, without getting too far down in the weeds here, Nikki, first off, it just kind of give me um, an idea or give anybody out there that may want to start looking into the association. What is it? So I'll start with some background on myself just so people know who I am. I'm Nikki North. I supervise the Flagler County Sheriff's Office Real-Time Crime Center. For those of you that may have absolutely no clue where that is, it's between St. Augustine and Daytona over in Florida. Um, I've been here five years now, and with this association, as Eric had said, I am the vice president of administration. Um, My duties primarily focus on website maintenance, kind of helping anything I can administratively, essentially, any questions with memberships, anything anyone has. So in order to join the association, right now we're right around 400 members, give or take. Um, on our website, nrtcca.org, you can go to the members area on there. And from there, it will have you create your profile, just have you fill in some information about yourself, as well as pay a $25 fee that will cover you through to the end of this year to start into next year. And at that point, we'll start doing some renewals and get that going out there. But on there, we're just trying to compile pretty much anything and everything we can think of, the questions that everyone always has, policies, um, where you fall in your chain of command, where you fall laterally. Just getting contacts from other agencies, getting contacts from vendors. We know everyone's always looking for different products for different things. What works for one agency doesn't always work for all. So that's kind of our goal is to be able to help anyone, no matter what size agency you are, no matter where you are at your point. If you're just starting out, if you're well-established, we want to help everyone kind of get connected. Okay. So for me as a cop looking uh, outside, looking in for something like that, if my agency doesn't have a, a real time crime center, let's say, and I'm like, I don't even know where the hell to start. Um, the, the association, the webpage, stuff like that, that's a good start to get going. Um, and kind of what I see the writing on the wall, I see, cause I, I'm, if for those wondering, I'm the communications, uh, guy from on the board. Um, I can't even remember what my official title is. What am I? The communications director. Yeah. I'm the communications <laughs> director. Um, so when I'm, lo- when I'm looking into this type of thing, it is, um, let's say I'm an agency of, you know, a hundred cops or less. And I'm like, we're too small to have a, a real time crime center. You know, maybe we're not, I don't know. So I'm going to reach out to this website and and find out what the best, best practices are. But the cool part about this is, what we're trying to do with the association is we're not looking out for the gigantic agencies. We're looking out for all agencies. So if you reach out to us and you're like, we only got a hundred cops, 
can we really even get a real time crime center going? We're going to say, yes, you can. Not only, yes, you can, we're going to get you connected with another department that has about 100 officers as well. And, um, you know, they're located in your region as well. You know, so now the culture and things will be similar. And on top of that, you're going to get to talk to somebody that had to start from the same spot you did that's already going. And then with that, you can stay with us and we will help you improve. We will get you exposed to all the brands that are out there because the association is agnostic on, on that stuff. We don't try to um, say one brand or the other. We just want to let you know what's out there and you pick for yourself. So that's what I like about the association so far. Um, it's in its infancy. And we are um, definitely growing super fast in Real time crime center in itself is is growing really fast. It's the intelligence led policing. So if you guys are looking to get started in that stuff, I mean, Nikki, how how long have you been at Flagler? You said five years. Five years, yeah. Five years. You're already the vice president of the association, and you are not a police officer, correct? Correct. So that just goes to show you, like, from the outside looking in, as in the cop world, like this stuff is growing. It's growing quick and nobody is an expert in it officially. And I started as a dispatcher and I know I have different people from different backgrounds all over here. So yeah, what you think is one size fits all is not always one size fits all. Correct. And so it's really cool. Um, it's, it's most definitely a fix for one of the biggest problems in law enforcement and that's communication. We don't, it's not intentional. We just don't talk to each other that much. I don't, I couldn't tell you how the agency next to me runs their dispatch, how they run their real time crime center, how they, how they run most of their stuff. But with the national real time crime center association, we're trying to, trying to fix all that. And, uh, we offer, um, uh, conferences or what's the, what's another word for what we, we put on. We put some summits out there. Summits. Some, That's the yeah. word I was looking for. So we're putting some, so we're putting out summits. Um, we just had our first, uh, na- annual summit. Um, yeah, this, uh, okay. just, just last year, I got to get used to saying 2022 now. Um, it was last year. Uh, we just had our first summit, um, where we had several brands, uh, several vendors come out that provide things, uh, that, na- that real time crime centers use. And you got a chance to get hands on. You got to learn. You got to talk to other agencies. Um, oh, I just got some bad feedback. You got to talk to other agencies and see um, how they're implementing this stuff and see if it works for you. Um, that's, that's one of the beauties of all the, the stuff that's available. It's, it's not a one size fit all. Like you said, um, some people have that gigantic screen that they see on the, on the wall when they walk in. Other people start out with what? What's the basics that you can have to start out a real-time crime center? You really just need to be able to access your call screen, have a radio, and access to some databases to really just start getting involved in it. So a lot of your resources you already have is all you need to start a crime center. You just need a person that's motivated enough to do it, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's discuss that. Um, this is the, the, the first podcast we have. We want our message to get out there that one, the num- one most important thing, anybody can start a real-time crime center. All you, you need, need is a radio and a computer. And a body. And a body. Yeah, you definitely need a body. Uh, unless <laughs> AI improves dramatically in the next few years. Right. <laughs> um, so that's the bare basics. Even, I, um, even at my agency, which I, I can't represent my agency, so we'll just say it's a, a North Texas in the DFW area, um, one of the 12 largest agencies. Uh, that's how we started. It was radio and a computer and a body and, and a motivated person. And it doesn't take, you don't have to be a tech person. You don't have to be any of that. It's just understanding the dynamics of it. So off of that, Nikki, when you guys got started five years ago ish, how long ago did you guys start your real time crime center? About four. And how large is your department? We are around 300 sworn. So you got about 300 sworn. You got a real time crime center started. What did it start at and what is it at now? So ours basically started with myself and one other analyst. We literally had our computers and our radio and the access of some databases we already had. And we just kind of started opening calls, listening to the radio for anything. Hey, I need help with finding a phone number for this person, reference this active call. And we just kind of built from there. We put a TV on the wall 
okay, cool. Now we have an extra screen beyond our giant monitors we already have. From there, then we started kind of realizing, oh, we can get some partnerships. Our city already has traffic cameras out there. What do we have to do to get access? Oh, our school already has camera in place. How do we get access from them to be able to see the school cameras? County already has cameras in place for various buildings ranging from the sheriff's office to the courthouse. How do we get access to those? So little by little, we just started getting feeds. Obviously, there's platforms that exist out there to put them all into one place. But even right now, our agency is still just utilizing each platform for what it is. So you don't need any fancy programs. You don't need any fancy video wall. You can sit there and just use what you have and slowly add in more resources. So what is the information that real-time Crime Center gets versus what a dispatcher would get? I'd say the biggest part is you just have more time to do it. Dispatch, there's just so much going on, listening to the radio, multiple people talking on the radio, answering phone calls. The difference is real time, you can solely dedicate yourself to focusing on one specific call of what's going on. You don't have to go from call to call to call. You can take, okay, this seems like the most important call that's happening right now. We just had a shooting. What can we do to help? Okay. Um, And what's cool that I like about the real time stuff is it can be reactive. Like you're saying, we're, we're, we're going back and trying to help out this call. Um, if you got video cameras around the city, you can go back and start finding cars and using LPRs and things of that nature. Um, but it can also be, this is my favorite part. It can be proactive. So you find your hot spots. Like let's say you've got a store that has got open air drug deals and stuff like that going on constantly. You can get cameras on there. If you know uh, you've got a specialized unit like narcotics is going to work a detail on that location. You can proactively get ahead with some intelligence-based policing that will keep everybody safer, including the bad guys, citizens, and the police. And the way that you do that, one way is, let's just say you start running plates of every car that's in the driveway. Or you start um, identifying people that are hanging out. You, you, you've got a we called it a beat book, but you got a beat book and you're like, okay, this is, you know, this is snuffy and he deals at that corner. He's the one wearing the red Nike shirt right now. So then when your officers are nearby and they do plan to either move in or safely take down a vehicle as it leaves the location in a more controlled area, um, you've already done your homework. You're ahead of the curve. You can start spotting guns in waistband, people carrying money, the per- person carrying dope, things of that nature. So on top of being able to get information for officers out there in real time, you can also get ahead of those officers before they even get out there and keep them safer, keep the bad guys safer, keep citizens safer. So if you're looking to start a real-time crime center, those are the three major benefits I see um, in having one. So now the trick is we got to start convincing people to start coming over to the association so they can learn the best practice. They don't have to learn the long and hard way from the stuff that we tried that didn't work, the stuff that we think does work. And they can get the opinions of multiple people, um, multiple agencies, and we can help facilitate all of that. Correct? That's correct. And I think the one thing that's been consistent, pretty much everyone we ever talk to of what's your biggest success is license plate readers. A lot of people are scared to kind of get them up front because you see the price tag that comes with them. But I I swear every person I've talked to has said their license plate readers in conjunction with some of the cameras are there top yeah. things of really being real time. If you get just one, <laughs> if you get just one yeah. and then show the results after, let's just give it a month, put it in a hot spot. That's another thing we'll help you out with is trying to figure out logistically where to put one. Um, uh, and, and we will be putting out white paper and stuff like that. So you can see in writing exactly what we're talking about. Um, we, we will even be offering to have people go out mobile, help you get set up, help you, design uh your setup all that stuff um i'm a big fan of the horseshoe (laughs) i think that's one of the best uh setups you can have but that is what is coming down the pipe for the national real-time crime center association um i'm trying to think is there anything we're missing so far anything you want to add i know we're working towards getting our first annual conference official dates out there that'll be in new orleans this september so here in the next couple of months, we should have official dates for everyone then too to finally have our actual first official conference in a pretty little cool location too. If somebody wants to be a member, what's the cost? Right now it is $25. And initially we had done it from whenever you signed up, up through 2024, because we were just kind of getting started. So now that we're officially at like year one, it'll get you through to 2024 and then we'll start sending out renewals and stuff. 
but basically that gets you access to all the special reset resources on our website so that way you can get access to you all these white papers all these different policies that other people are using contact information that kind of thing so right now on there I believe it's about 200 agencies that have real-time crime centers are on there already with a list of who to contact their hours how many people are staffed there so it'll kind of give you a good reference too if you are trying to see who's similar to you you'll see this place has how many sworn how many civilian what they're doing yeah it, it, it's really it's like a cheat code um for people out there like you do not need to reinvent the wheel and that's what i like about what we are doing because i know me personally when we got our real-time crime center going there was no blueprint it was like <laughs> what do we do and we spent a lot of money we didn't need to spend. We, and you know, you learn from your lumps. And if we can help agencies get started the right way without having to learn from those lumps and save them a lot of money, save citizen money, um, help you write grants, help you find money that's out there that you didn't know existed. I mean, I think it's worth it. Um, especially I think another big part of that too, is making yourself known that you're out there too. Yes. Now our agency puts out a lot of press releases. Sometimes it backfires in some places, but if you call anywhere here, they know our real-time crime center exists. They know exactly who to transfer you to. I know that was a struggle putting together some of the list is not everyone even knew their agency even had a real-time crime center. So don't be afraid to make it known in, especially internally, but not even externally too, because it kind of helps you build that rapport with your citizens too. Hey, we're not using the cameras just to watch you. We're watching the bad guys. We're not just watching everyone. Right. Correct. Um, if you want to find us, if you want to find the association uh, or you want to get other people connected, just go to nrtcca.org. I got that up on the screen right now. Um, this podcast will also be audio, audio only. We're going to offer both. So if you're on Spotify, if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, Amazon, we're going to offer it on there. We're going to have it on YouTube. Um, the episodes will be posted on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook. Um, you can find us on uh, LinkedIn, especially. That is our heaviest presence is on LinkedIn. Um, so find us there. Uh, you can go directly to our website. I'm going to put that back up on the screen. Um, and we're going to talk about, real quick, memberships, which we just hit on. Uh, you'll go up to the memberships tab that I got up here. And you can just go in here and get yourself set up. Um, Pretty simple, isn't it, Nikki? Yeah, you just right there you click to pay the fee and then right below that is where you create your actual profile once your fee's paid and then you are pretty much all set from there. Okay. There we go. Um, do you have to be a cop to get a part of this? You do not know. Okay. You will get some extra access if you are a cop, but you do not have to be a cop to have access. Excellent. Excellent. And and that's the other thing with the real time crime centers, folks. Just depending on your policies and procedures. Um my department is all sworn officers. Some departments are all civilians. Some departments are hybrids. So um, you will have the ability to talk to agencies like that, find out the, the pros and cons of each, and uh, figure out what fits best for your department. But with that said, Nikki, do you have anything else for our first official podcast here? No, I think that's everything I can think of. We hope this brings in some new members, and we look forward to keeping these up each month. Absolutely. We're going to try to keep these down to uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and this being our first one, we're right in that window. It's perfect. Um, you guys can find me. I do host another podcast, Two Cops, One Donut podcast. And oftentimes I will have more long, in-depth conversations with people all throughout the criminal justice career field. And uh, you can check out, like I got one with Dalton Webb where we talk about real-time crime centers. But that is a much longer, way more in-depth uh, conversation. So things like that, uh, look forward to, and we will try, be sure to hit us up. If you guys have any suggestions for things that you want to hear on a podcast, um, let us know and we will try to get that covered, but we will be releasing one a month, um, foreseeably at the end of the month. And you guys will have something to look forward to every time. I'm sure we are always looking for guests too. Yep. Always trying to get guests. Uh, and, uh, you can hit me up at my email. Um, and you can find that on our NRTCCA website uh, if you're looking to get a hold of me. Or just hit me up on LinkedIn. All right, ma'am. I think all that's right. all we got. All right. All thank right. You. I'll talk to you again later. See ya. All right. Bye.